Hi everyone, welcome to chapter eight, which is all about the conservation of momentum. Now, momentum is mass times velocity, and it's quite intuitive. People have a good understanding about momentum. Um, momentum is inertia in motion. So if I threw a watermelon and a grape at you at the same speed, which one would be easier for you to catch? Well, obviously the grape, because the watermelon would have so much more mass that it would be trickier to attempt to stop. That's momentum. It is an, the multiplication of mass times velocity. So it's very intuitive, the mass Mathematics is pretty simple. Uh, the math, this whole chapter is pretty simple. And I think you're going to enjoy it. It's one of the things that I learned early in my physics career that I tended to enjoy a lot. So let's take a look at what the week unfolds for us. Um, as typical, we're going to have a study guide. We'll have some homework problems. If you take a look, we only have 12 of those, so that's not a terribly big deal. Um, momentum is all about collisions, different kinds of collisions. And when we talk about different kinds of collisions and momentum, we're going to be looking at if energy is conserved or not. That's the big deal in collisions. Uh, conservation of kinetic energy. Energy is conserved all over the place, but we're going to look at kinetic energy before and after things collide. So I've got a collection of some fun videos for you to look at uh, where things bounce off of each other and uh, a lovely Mythbusters collision right here. So I hope you can take the time and enjoy those. We're also going to engage in some collisions in this week's lab. So our momentum lab this week, you are going to be colliding things called dynamic carts. In your lab kit, you have some dynamic carts. And these dynamic carts are little blue carts that you are going to collide one with another. And within your lab, there is a link, and this link will show you how to actually assemble them. It's a quick little 45 cent second video, and it's a little bit tricky. You've got to take some bits apart and put them back together to get those bits and pieces the way you want them to be. In this lab this week, you're going to be colliding one cart with another and the trick is going to be timing them carefully. If you have a high speed timing device or program you've used in the past, like a video camera on your phone you've used in slow motion, cool, that will work well. If not, here are a couple videos or links that will help you possibly get some free downloads to get some high speed timing devices. Um, and if you choose not to use those, please be aware that poor timing is going to be the nemesis to good results in this lab. One of the other challenges you're going to find in this lab is getting the carts to run straight. Now I do every one of the labs that I ask you to do. That's where I get the photographs and how I actually write the procedures for, for your experiments. So you're going to have two little blue carts. Um, and I actually wrote cart A and cart B on each one of mine. And you're going to have a collection of books and the white foam to create an inclined plane. And that's where you're going to give one cart some initial velocity and it's going to come down and hit another cart. And one of the challenges is the carts have to run in straight lines in order to hit each other. I found that difficult. Um, after the carts hit each other, the second cart had a tendency to go all over the place and it needs to run kind of straight. So you're going to have to MacGyver something together in order to get decent data. A couple suggestions. One suggestion is to cut pieces off of the sides of your foam board and make yourself a little racetrack. Um, so that after the cars collide, they actually can travel inside of this channel. Another option, you only have to do one of these, is to create a little track for the cars to run over instead of between. The cars can actually run over this little racetrack. And if you happen to be incredibly lucky and your cars 
collide and run nice and straight without doing either of these, yahoo, you do not have to do either one. You'll notice in the pictures that I have, this is how the dynamic carts are put together. There's a little rubber stopper and a metal spring. Um, you can experiment a little bit if you want both carts to have a spring so that the two springs collide. Some people find that the collisions are a little more straight and true if one cart has a spring and the other one just has the rubber stopper. So use your ingenuity, engineer things through and see what you get. After you've got the setup going, the timing and data taping, taking will be quite quick. Um, you're going to run the carts a few times, have some collisions, measure a distance, measure some time. With that time and distance data, you are going to find a velocity of each cart before and after. And the cart that starts out with zero velocity, well, that's going to be pretty easy. And then using that information, you are going to calculate kinetic energy, um, momentum before, momentum after for the entire collision, kinetic energy and before and after for the entire setup. And you are going to do two different situations. How are you going to change the set the setups? Well, you're going to change them by varying the mass in the carts. So follow the little yellow brick road of the experiment. I ask for one photo of the setup you end up using because I'm actually quite curious. Um, over time, I might adapt and change the whole experiment if I find that one setup of making the cars run straight most students use because they find that works best. So I hope you have fun with your carts this week and uh, enjoy. It's kind of a fun experiment. It, if you had can do it on top of a counter or a tabletop, great. I had to do it on the floor because it takes up a lot of space. All right, have a good week. And as always, if you have questions, please be in touch. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.